Chapter 23. That bitch! Sam didn't curse much, but that one word felt so good a million more came flooding into her brain and started tumbling out of her mouth. However, Miss Ramsaroop's voice emerged from the kitchen, followed closely by her mother's own voice. Sam listened to the familiar greetings of the two women, followed surely by hugs and kisses. This stopped Sam short of her expletive-filled speech, and she began to prowl around the den like a cornered tiger in a cage. Natalie and Steve simply sat on the couch with stunned expressions, probably because they'd never seen or heard Sam in such a state. It was just too much, too much for Sam to take. Not only had she thought for the last four days of, that her mental health was compromised, now she found out that one of her lifetime friends totally sold her out in order to save her own skin. Life sucked. And the thought of just being done with it all popped into her mind yet again. She wondered what would be easier, pills, a gun, this time, Sam stopped her spiral. She knew despair, actual, literal despair, must be somewhere near. She sat down in the chair, put her head in her hands, and lifted up a silent plea. Please, God, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord. Please help me. She wasn't sure if she rocked back and forth. She didn't care what Natalie and Steve thought. She simply pleaded with God to help her. What was she going to do? Mrs. Ramsaroop and Mrs. Flynn came walking into the den. Mrs. Ramsaroop had a large tray packed with lemonade and cookies, and Sam thought she heard her ask Miss Flynn to please sit and have a glass. JT's in the car. I'd love to, but I've got to get home and get the girls to a soccer game. Sam heard her mother's voice somewhere in the room. Sam, honey, you ready to go? Sam knew her eyes were red, but she didn't care. She looked up at the people in front of her, mentally dared anyone to say a thing, picked up her backpack, and headed to the door. Lisa Flynn immediately asked her daughter what was wrong, but the ride home didn't provide enough distance to go into any detail. The completely numb feeling that consumed Sam for most of the last month pressed down on her. Thoughts of escape flooded over her in endless waves. Thick despair made breathing feel like being underwater, drowning. Could someone drown themselves? The churning in her belly shot pain straight into her heart, and Sam shook her head trying to remove the unthinkable thoughts that crept continually into her brain. All she could do was silently plead to God to help her. Help her. He's done this to you. He's not listening. He's not coming. You're alone. You're all alone in this world. Wave after wave, pounding her under the surf, washing her out to the sea. In the name and by the power of Jesus Christ, I command what Ever dark spirit is present in this car, it must be gone. I claim the salvation of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for myself and all of my family. Satan has no power here. The only power is the blood of Jesus Christ. Lisa Flynn had pulled over in the quick trip parking lot. Her hand squeezed her daughter's arm, and the pain of it pulled Sam back from the edge of the sea to the safety of the shore. Sam looked at her mother in the eyes and saw the fear, but also determination. The set of her mouth, the clench of her jaw, made her look like a soldier doing battle. Scared to death, but with no doubt that she was going to win this war. The weight instantly lifted off of Sam, and Sam put her head in her mother's lap and cried. Because life goes on, and a few short minutes later, Lisa Flynn pulled into the driveway, put the car in park, and spoke her battle orders. 
JT is asleep. I'm leaving the car running. You sit here and you pull yourself together while I go in and get the girls. Sam didn't question. She did as her mother told her. She sat in the car, staring out the window, too afraid to think of it all. She emptied her brain and studied the pattern the shingles made on the edge of the garage roof. In no time, Lily and Mary Beth buckled in the back, chattering away about their day. Sam simply stared at rooftops, at stoplights. She counted shingles. One, two, three, four. No thoughts. Just count. When the Flynn clan arrived at the soccer fields, Lisa Flynn told the girls, Sammy and I, we're going to stay in the car until JT wakes up. Then we'll come watch. Sammy. Her mother never called her that anymore. Sammy was the name for a child. But it felt so good to be called Sammy. A child. That's what she wanted to be. No problems, no worries. Just run to the soccer field and have fun. Just like she and Aubrey used to do when they were kids. The thought of Aubrey and the absolute heartache of it all filled the car again. Mom, Aubrey's telling everyone it was my idea to go to the bonfire. She's blaming everything on me. Sam didn't even think about how much trouble the girls had caused. She just wanted her mom to fix it, fix things like she did when she was Sammy. I know, her mom responded. Sam couldn't even get out. What? Mrs. Tennis found your dad before you ever even left the hospital. It was not a very pretty scene. Faith and I had to step in and make your dad and Mr. Tennis lower their voices. But I'm sure the whole hospital heard them, probably most of the town. Her mom delivered this news in way too calm a manner. Sam, stunned, just looked at her mother. The silence felt like an eternity. Sam didn't know what to say. Look, Sam. Her mother broke the silence for her. I've been watching you and Aubrey grow apart for the last few years. I know how your dad and I raise you, and I know how the Tennises raise Aubrey. Her tone was not judgmental. It simply stated fact. It wasn't my idea. Sam heard a sound coming from her mouth. But the voice spoke so weak and pitifully, she didn't really recognize it as her own. I know, her mother said. You believe me? Sam questioned. And Dad? Sam could hardly get out the words. She suddenly realized the extreme importance to her that her dad believed her. <laughs> that he knew she was still basically a good kid. She so desperately did not want to disappoint him, but that was exactly what she had done. And the tears began to flow, a free stream down her face. Sammy, her mother said as she reached out and touched her arm. The warmth of her fan, hand felt like a soothing balm on Sam's icy cold skin. Sam closed her eyes and let the stream flow freely. Sammy, how many times in the last 15 years has it been your idea? Was it your idea to go look for tadpoles in Walnut Creek and get caught by the heavy rain and flash flood that almost swept you two into oblivion? Was it your idea to take the golf cart because it was raining and there was nothing else to do and leave huge tracks up on about four greens on the golf course? Was it your idea to switch Mrs. Brennan's coffee with dirt. The thought of her fourth grade teacher's face when she took that first sip actually made Sam laugh out loud. Gosh, I'd forgotten about all that, Mom. Samantha. Uh-oh, the full name. Does it matter who had the idea? The question was a valid one, but 
Nonetheless, Sam did not like it. Samantha, does it really matter? Sam tried to remember the punishment she received for all the misdeeds committed under Aubrey's influence over the years. So why have you let me be friends with her? Sam thought the question valid. If she had done so many horrible things with Aubrey over the years, why had her parents permitted her to even hang around her? Do you remember when you were little and I wouldn't allow you to play with Barbies? That was not exactly an answer to Sam's question. Yes, ma'am. Sam decided against pointing out that obvious. I didn't want you playing with Barbies because I thought they represented an unrealistic expectation of what the world thought a woman should be. But then you started preschool and we had your first real birthday party. Do you remember what presents everyone bought you? Barbies. Sam remembered just how excited she had been. Probably because they were $4.99 at Walmart, but my campaign to live a Barbie-free life ended that day. Didn't I have a Barbie sheet set and comforter too? Your grandmother did that one to me. She thought I had been acting way too uptight. This made both the Flynn women chuckle at the memory of Nana Tate and how angry Lisa had gotten with her mother when Sam opened her sheets and comforter. Sam closed her eyes and saw Nana in a rainbow of color over JT's crib, and the stream of tears began flowing again. The point is, Sammy, Nana had to teach me that you will always be part of a very earthly world. It doesn't matter how desperately I try to protect you from anything or anyone that I think may harm you. I can't. Aubrey's always been a risk taker, even when y'all were little. But you and Aubrey chose each other as friends. No matter how hard I try to nip it, you played with her. And you spent more hours a day at school with Aubrey than you ever spent at home with me. I had to decide early on to love Aubrey like she was one of my own and try to raise you the best that I could. Being a mom, it is not for wimps. Sam opened her eyes and looked at her mother. For the first time, Sam saw the lines etched around her eyes like someone had drawn them there while Sam wasn't looking. But I still did all those things with her, didn't I, Mom? Sam hung her head. Yes, you did, baby. I pray every day that you'll make good decisions. That's all I can do. You're an individual with a very strong will. Your dad and I have hopefully taught you right from wrong, but you're a young woman now. Very, very soon you'll be driving. I wish I could always be in the car with you, but I can't. Now all I can do is pray and trust that God listens and watches over you. What was up with that stop at the quick trip? Sam remembered her mother pulling over to pray and the weight lifting off of her. Not really sure. I could tell something was terribly wrong and it scared me. I could feel it. I could feel it in the car with us. I didn't know what else to do, so I stopped and just said the first things that came out of my mouth. You felt it too? The shock of someone else noticing what had been churning around Sam for weeks set a spark of hope inside of Sam. She hadn't felt that for a very long time. She was going to tell her. She was going to tell her mom everything. Her mom could fix this. She could make sense of the dreams, of the fire, of Ellen, of lust, of anger, of who wrath ruled, and what Sam had to do. Yes, now, now was the time. Dada! squealed a little voice from the back seat, just as Jonathan Flynn tapped on the car window. The time passed.